Hello, it's Patrick here from the garagebandguide.com. In this video, I'm going to share my top tips to get you started with GarageBand for iPhone and iPad. The first time you open GarageBand for iOS, or when you open a new project, you'll be taken directly to the sound browser. This is where you can choose a touch instrument to play, add more sounds, or record an external instrument through your iDevices built-in microphone or via an audio interface. Swipe left or right to view the different instruments available, then tap the one that you want to play. The options in the lower part of the instrument card take you directly to chord strips, notes view scales, or you can tap more sounds to see additional sounds for that instrument. Each touch instrument has a play area and a controls area. The play area is where you can play melodies, chords and sounds by touching the touch instrument's keys, strings or other playable elements. You can change the sound of the instrument using the knobs, buttons and other controls in the controls area. Here's a closer look at GarageBand's guitar touch instrument. Using the touch guitar, you can play notes, chords and strumming patterns. You can choose from acoustic or electric guitar sounds and add stomp box effects to customise its sound. Tap the guitar icon in the top corner and select the sound that you want to play. Tap the chord slash note switch to change to the chords view. You can strum a chord by swiping across the strings in one of the strips. You can tap the top of the chord strip to play a full chord. And you can mute the strings by touching and holding the fretboard to the left or right of the chord strips as you play. There's also an autoplay function that you can use by turning the autoplay knob to one of four positions. Tapping a chord strip will play a pattern with the notes of that chord. Tap a different strip to change the notes that are played. Now that you know how to play touch instruments, here's how to record them. When you record a touch instrument, it appears in a region in the instruments track in the tracks view. When you're ready, tap record in the control bar. Recording will start at the current position of the playhead. The ruler shows the area being recorded in red. Any notes you play, as well as any changes to sliders, knobs, or other controls are recorded too.
When you're done recording, tap the play button in the control bar. Your recording will then appear in the tracks view as a region. GarageBand includes a set of Apple loops, which are pre-recorded audio files that you can use to easily add drum beats, bass lines, rhythm parts, and other sounds to your project. Loops contain musical patterns that can be seamlessly repeated or looped over and over. You can quickly find loops in the loop browser and preview them to find the ones that you want to use in your song. All of the loops that you'll find in GarageBand are available for use on a royalty-free basis, so you can use them in any of your projects, commercial or otherwise, without having to worry about any copyright issues. Tap the Loop Browser button in the control bar. The Loop Browser button is available only in the Tracks view, just keep that in mind. The first time you open the Loop Browser, it shows the instrument grid. Now here you can search by instrument, you can search by genre, and you can search by description. And the results list shows loops that match your search criteria. Drag a loop from the results list to an empty part of the tracks view screen and then align the left edge of the loop with the bar or beat where you want it to start playing. There you have it, that's my top tips to get you started with GarageBand on iPad or iPhone. If you found this video helpful, then leave a like, I really do appreciate it. And you might as well subscribe while you're here if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that notification bell as well to make sure you don't miss a thing. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.